Now, the other thing to know about this piece is um, the third note, the first drum there. Third, the third note of the first drum there, you see, which is on the middle line. That middle line is the number one. So when you're singing the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Not really. Well, we're spelling it in major. In major. Why? We're not spelling. Well, because it's really easy one. I know it's minor. Okay. <laughs> it's it all relative. You'll see. You'll see. Okay. You'll see. <laughs> we're going to use a pentatonic tonight, and there's a difference between the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, and she knows. What the time? Uh, but you're not supposed to know yet. I don't want to know nothing. Yeah, I don't know nothing. Tonic talk. Just learn what I tell you. <laughs> like a good priest. So anyway, in the, that center line there in major would be the number one. And if you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That middle line would be that one. And then to play the part below that, I'd go one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. There's numbers all over this thing right now. What are you yes, I know. Numbers? Those numbers are fingering oh, patterns, okay. generally. And in piano, they always think of the thumb as one. This finger is two, three, four, and five. And here's the problem. That makes sense. And when you go this way, you're going up on the piano. The pitch is going up. But they then label the left hand backwards. They make the thumb one, the index yeah. finger two, three, in order to mirror. Right. So the problem is, is that it doesn't make sense in terms of the actual musical interval. Unless you play this way. <laughs> well, yes. Right. Or, or here's what you can do. You can think of it as one, right. two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, one. <laughs> Play the scale, yeah, play the scale. Could you charge other one? I think we could do it this way. And here's the thing. It, here's my advice to music teachers. Never label the fingers. Label the keys. It's not the fingers. You, I mean, you're using the fingers to play. But if a person comes to you that only has one finger on one hand and was a polio victim and only has two fingers on the other hand and wants to learn to play the piano, you'd be stuck using these damn fingering numbers. Also, a lot of kids in stuff, they actually cheat. They try not to learn their ABCs, and they learn the fingering numbers, and they start playing by the fingering numbers. And what happens is in the beginner books, they're OK. But when they start to get to the middle books, or the intermediate books, where the people start removing the fingering numbers and expect you to figure it out, then the kids in our face would not be able to cheat, and they run right into this roadblock where they just suddenly can't play anything all of a sudden, they go down in flames. So my advice is, you know, I explain to them that books do this, but, you know, books do this, but... It's a dead-end street. It's a dead-end street, yes. The thing to really understand is to label the keys and play with any fingers you've got. And then if someone's giving you a fingering pattern, if you're having problems with a passage, then sit down and look at that person's fingering numbers knowing what their, their key for it is, and then see if it does make it easier. In many cases, it does. They've thrown out the fingerings. It does make it easier. But you, I suggest you only look at them when you're having a problem. Other than that, do what comes natural. So my way of thinking of this is do is one, re is two, mi is three, etc. So I'm going do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, which in Europe is known as solfege. And people in Europe learn solfege and learn to actually not only sing solfege, but they learn to read on the staff solfege. And they can read keys in just about in any key and sing do, re, mi, and can pick up a score and pretty much sing it, sight unseen. Okay. The problem is, is that what they've learned, the do, re, mi, does not relate to the rest of music theory. And so you are not going to learn any advanced music theory using it. It is a very convenient way to train the ear and to make the ear conscious. But it is not a way to understand music theory. So what happens is you're learning one more dead language that, you know, like in computers these days, I don't want to learn one more HTML lang. I've learned 25 computer languages and forgotten them or not used them. <laughs> I want to learn one more 
language that's going to, in two years, be a dead language. And so, so that's what's happening when you're running. So, however, if you just replace do re mi with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then what you're doing is you're replacing that ancient Italian language with the Arabic numerals, which we all know, and can say, even you can say in Spanish or German, or whatever, Polish, whatever language you want to use the same and that you're comfortable with, say those numbers. And what those numbers represent is the actual distances between the notes on the scale. So the numbers that you're singing and the numbers that are on the staff and the numbers that are actually, that you're feeling, are all the same. They're all one and the same. They're expressing a distance. A distance. Your ear hears a distance. Your hand feels a distance. Your body senses, feels the tension in that interval, the distance. And your eye can learn to see the distance. So they're all expressing distance. So if you make them all with one language, uh, interesting things happen. Your, your senses start to short circuit. You, you'll look at music and you'll actually hear it in your head. That's the point. <laughs> so um, anyway, what I wanted to have Angel come up here and play the piece and see if we can follow along as she plays it, again, just watching the code words. And you'll see that we all we know all these code words. So we can basically all we need to do is learn the scale to learn to play this piece. And if you play this top part on any musical instrument, you can play it on a fife or a, a zither. As a matter of fact, there are no uh, there are no there's one sharp in the whole piece. So you could probably even play it on a harmonica. Okay, ready? So let's just listen to the code word that she plays it. Remember the first one's hump beat. scale. And we've been doing the pentatonic scale, right? We're going to do some of that 